Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So CSIR has finally announced their result of June 2024 exam and the result right now when I am recording this video till now the result which is announced only contains your roll number and your rank and the result is divided in different categories. Uh, we don't have the cutoff as of now when I am recording this video but I am hopeful that till the time I will be publishing this video you will be having the uh, cutoff also announced by CSIR. So in case if you have not uh, watched your uh, or if you have not checked your result I will give you a link of my video where I have discussed how you can check your result and that's what you have to do. Go to the official page and download the PDF file and check out your result. Okay. Now uh, I'll be talking about the different categories of the result. Basically I'm here to explain you what this result actually mean and what are the different categories, what are the benefits of each category and what are the things that you become eligible for when you when your roll number falls in a certain category. I'll be also talking about certain more things like CSIR, UGC because I'm getting a lot of queries from the students that why, why I am, my name is in UGC JRF when I have given CSIR JRF. So I'll be talking about all this in detail. Okay, So all your queries related to this should be get uh, clarified after watching this video. Okay. So let's directly dig into it. So till now CSIR does not used to give result like this. It The result only used to be uh, separated in two different sections, JRF and NET, LS. But this time they have made three category of result. Okay, Category 1 is the one where it says that qualified for award of junior research fellowship and eligible for assistant professor. Okay, So that's your category number 1. The second category says that you are eligible for assistant professor and admission to PhD whereas the third category says that you are eligible for admission to PhD only. Okay, So these are the three categories. Now all these three categories uh, you might already know how many students have qualified in a particular category but let me tell you what benefit you are going to get. Okay, So out of three the category where it says that uh, awarded for or qualified for the award of junior research fellowship and uh, lecturership that's the best or that's category number one and that's the category which is gonna be highly the cutoff for that should be highest okay because that category makes you eligible for everything what are those three things okay so this exam this CSI net exam makes you eligible or this particular exam is for three different things Number one is to get a fellowship for during your PhD. Okay, so if you want to do your PhD from any institute in India, you have to uh, like like you should also get a fellowship out of that. Okay, now there are different ways of getting this fellowship, but this exam is one of those ways which makes you eligible to get a certain amount of fellowship, which is thirty-seven thousand as JRF per month, and which escalates and becomes forty-two thousand later on when you become SRF. But basically your fellowship is 37,000 per month as of now. Okay, So uh, this is the first thing for which this exam makes you eligible for. The second thing for which this exam makes you eligible for is for assistant professorship. Now when you apply for assistant professor any time in your life throughout your academic career if you want to become assistant professor in that case when you are going to apply for that position they are going to ask you whether you have qualified an exam called as NET or not Okay, national eligibility test or not. The same way how you if you go for some uh, school level or some uh, junior college level exam uh, sorry teaching position and if you try to apply over there they ask you for B.Ed or P.E.T. There are different exams over there but here N.E.T. which is national eligibility test is the exam which you have to qualify in order to become eligible to apply as an assistant professor. So that is the second thing for which this exam makes you eligible for and the third thing is admission to PhD. Okay, So with this exam with qualifying this, this exam you become eligible to apply for PhD in different places like different UGC approved institutes and CSIR labs although this is not clear as of now CSIR has not clarified that which institutes are going to take admission based upon this result but I believe that UGC approved institutes, UGC approved universities and CSIR lab should follow this rule because this exam is conducted by them. Okay, So what are the three benefits of this exam? First, you get a fellowship for your PhD. Second, you become uh, or you qualify for uh, applying as assistant professor. You become eligible for assistant professor and the third thing is you can apply for PhD admission. Now, there are three categories of the result as I said. Category 1 is for those who have qualified for all these three things. So the person whose name is in category 1, that person has qualified for all the three things. He, all, he is going to get a fellowship during his PhD. He is also eligible to apply as, as, as assistant professor and he can also take admission into PhD. So he can do all the three things 
because his name is in category 1 of the result okay so category 1 result or category 1 people are eligible for all the three things which i told you category 2 result or the names or the people whose name fall in category 2 they are they do not get a fellowship they are not going to get the fellowship which category 1 people were getting so they are not called as jrf qualified so junior research fellowship or the award of junior research fellowship they are not going to get that but they become eligible for two things first they are eligible for applying as assistant professor later in their academic career wherever they are they want to apply they have qualified that exam and the validity for this is throughout life okay so don't worry about that so yeah, you can apply for assistant professorship uh, and the second thing is you can take admission in phd so category 2 students have qualified for these two things assistant professorship and admission to phd now comes the category 3 which is this time which is a very fairly new uh, category of the result and this result or this category basically makes you eligible for only getting admission into PhD. Now I want to cl clarify a few things that uh, the fellowship which I said 37,000 per month that is only awarded to those whose name comes in category 1. Okay. Now that particular fellowship is not given to category 2 and category 3 students. So even though they can apply or they can take admission into PhD, they are not going to get that amount of fellowship. So what will be their fellowship? generally institute fellowship or university fellowship or non net fellowship that's what we call them so that till now okay till now that amount was 8000 rupees i have no idea whether that is going to be increased decreased there is no explanation about that from csr end so i cannot say about that but what information i have as of now is you are going to get 8000 per month if you qualify uh, or if you take admission if your name is in category 2 and category 3 okay the eligibility to apply as assistant professor as i said if your name is in category 1 or category 2 your eligibility to apply as as a assistant professor is for whole of your life you can apply for assistant professor if you qualify or if you fulfill the other eligibility criteria which i am not going to talk about in this video now what is the benefit of your result in category 3 the benefit is that there were many students who earlier they were not able to qualify jrf or net but yet they wanted to do phd okay and for that different universities like du bhu amu all these universities of india who, these used to conduct their own entrance exams and then interview so this these students used to fill the form of different form of all these institutes all these universities then go through their process and then they get to enrolled into the phd program where again the fellowship is not given to them this 37000 fellowship is not given to them they are only eligible for the non net fellowship which i have told you so now all of these students are bought under the same umbrella by this exam so now these these institutes or these universities like du bhu they are not going to conduct their own entrance exams now they will just see your result that okay you have qualified under category 3 they will call you for the interview and i am not sure what now what is going to happen based upon rank or how they are going to call upon but yes that's how they are going to do they are going to call you for the interview based upon your interview performance 30 percent of your interview performance 70 percent of your written exam result combined they are going to make a merit list and then you can take admission into these institutes this is the benefit of category 3 if your name is in category 3 you can get into phd without a big amount of fellowship okay without the fellowship that's what i can say okay uh, category 2 as i said category 2 person has only one plus point that okay he is also qualified for assistant professorship so later on when uh, that person has to apply for assistant prof professorship he will be having that eligibility already fulfilled and category 1 are the creamy layer or they are the one who have qualified everything they will get the fellowship also they have also qualified for the assistant professorship and they also can take admission into phd all right so this is your overall result summarized now one point i want to make over here that many of you were asking that what is this under category 1 there are under category 1 there are two sections jrf net csir and uh, one more is there which is uh, which is a jrf net ugc okay now let me explain that so there are this exam is called as joint csir ugc net exam that means this exam is conducted by two agencies csir and ugc combinedly or jointly okay so because now see what happens that every agency or every organization they have certain amount of fund to give to the scientist the budding scientist who are going to be scientist in the future so those who are going to do research in science they have certain amount of fund so that they can give it to them 
a CSIR has certain amount of fund, UGC has certain amount of fund, they combinedly take this exam and now they have divided the qualified student among themselves. Some have become CSIR, JRF or JRF, NET, CSIR and some have, some have become UGC, JRF or JRF, NET, UGC. So, what is the difference between these two? Both of them are going to get same fellowship, both of them can uh, are eligible for assistant professorship and both of them are eligible to take admission into PhD. The only difference is that for those whose roll number is under JRF net CSIR, for them the fellowship will be awarded from the CSIR as the agency. And whereas those whose roll number is in JRF net UGC, their fellowship will be provided through UGC. Okay. Now, both these organizations, they have little differences in their eligible, uh, like in their way of giving you uh, funds or in the way of giving you the fellowship, okay. Some ask you to send their, your, your documents to them via mail or something like that. UGC does not ask like that. Then some give that fellowship very frequently, like every month on a regular interval of time or on a precise date, your account is going to be credited by your fellowship. Some takes time, it uh, it gives you fellowship in three months or in a gap of few months, okay. But you will get your money, that is sure, but the the frequency with which you get, that is different for both of them, okay. Till the time I was doing my PhD, UGC was a better one. UGC was the one who was giving fellowship on time and uh, like every month we used to get the fellowship from UGC JRF. CSIR JRF used to uh, struggle a little bit, they used to get fellowship after six month uh, gap. So they used to get combined six month money in at the same time okay so i don't know what is happening right now what's the exact way of dispersion of this particular fellowship from both these organization but last time when i talk about it probably with my junior they told me that now both of them are free, equally frequent so this is the difference between ugc jrf and csr jrf you must be thinking that cs i have given csr net exam why my name is in ugc jrf this is the reason, okay. You have not given CSIR net exam, you have given joint CSIR UGC net exam. That's why both these organizations are responsible for giving you funds. So, although UGC takes care of non science students, but certain part of UGC or certain fund of UGC is for science students also, okay. That fund you are going to get your, uh, your fellowship from. So, I hope that I made things clear over here. I hope that I was clear enough and I was able to explain you all the things in detail what, I, what this overall result is all about. If st you still have certain question or if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section below and that's all from my side for this particular video. I will see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.